Once upon a time, there was a guy named Link who lived in level one in a land called Hyrule. And his job, his only job, was to take care of lovely Princess Zelda. One day, something terrible happened. This guy named Ganyan came out from level nine and stole Princess Zelda and took her all the way to level nine and held her captive in a terrible prison. Not as, quite as hot as this room, but pretty close. <laughs> now, Link lived in level one. So Link did what all great boyfriends and husbands do. He went on a quest to go rescue the princess using his tool. And the tool he had was a brown sword. Just like your prospects have a tool to get their job done, he was getting the job done just fine. Able to defeat level one and two monsters with no problem. Link wasn't looking for a new sword because his brown sword was doing the job. Just like when you reach out to your prospects, they're getting the job done too with their brown sword. You see, when you reach out to prospects, just like Link, he's in the blue zone of the struggleometer. If he was in the red zone, he'd be contacting you. They're getting the job done in the blue zone. But one day, just like your prospects, something changed. As Link went deeper into Hyrule, he bumped into level three enemies. And this is a bad emmer effer. This guy's Lionel. And he is much stronger than any enemy he ever bumped into. And because of that, Link got a little hurt. He lost a heart, as you can see, in his life meter. But even though he was hurt, he was still able to make progress. And because he was able to make progress, he's not gonna buy a new sword. You see, problems aren't enough to get you to switch. I have a pixel out on my TV, but I barely notice it, so I'm not buying a new TV. Only half my grill works, but I'm only cooking salmon for my wife and I, so I just moved the salmon over to the left-hand side of the grill. We will do what we can to not switch and spend the money because of anxiety and the risk of switching. So if I'm in the blue or the yellow zone, which is the majority of your prospects, I'll just use my brown sword. Link didn't know of any other way to get the job done. You see, the brown sword was all he knew, just like your prospects. They're using their brown sword too. He didn't even know that in levels four through eight, there were even stronger monsters waiting for him that could cause more damage to his hearts. Literally with a slice could knock out two hearts. Luckily for Link, he got a letter in the mail from Will the Wizard, the greatest salesperson in all of Hyrule. So I want to show you exactly what he did so you can steal his approach for your prospects. You guys can reverse engineer it. First, he had to get Link's attention. How do you do that? Well, this is a new piece of technology that many of you don't know. Will actually sent one of these. This is called an envelope. Um, <laughs> it's hard to describe, but you actually hold it. It's not an app. And this is not a font. You actually write on it. It says Will the Wizard, Link Hyrule, that's his name. There's a stamp over there. Now, when I was doing research for this, I didn't realize this, but Link actually has a last name. You guys know what it is? It's a Jewish guy. Everybody, my Jews here. Shai is with Leibowitz. Ah, ah, ah. Okay, all right. And next, he needed, next, he needed a first sentence. Did that work? I don't know. Okay. Next, he needed a first sentence that would inspire Link to read the second sentence. So I study copywriting. The job of every sentence is to get someone to read the next sentence. How do you get someone to read a first sentence? Well, I like a technique called attention breaker. Look, dude, everybody knows we're selling stuff. When you go on their LinkedIn post and you say, I noticed this, they know what's coming. So my approach is, I'll just tell them. Right? I'll just break the tension. I'll just clear the air. So this is what I'll often say. I know, I know, another wizard telling you what you should and shouldn't do in Hyrule to rescue Princess Zelda, but please give me four more sentences before you burn this letter with a fireball. I'm just owning up to it. Another technique. Hi, Nick, I got your name from a B2B list. Congratulations on being list worthy. I just kind of call it out. It's called a tension breaker. Just being real, just being honest. Next, I need to read Link's mind. If you can articulate what someone's thinking as if they were saying it, they're going to keep reading. Let me give you an example. I do triathlons. I'm going to give you two emails, A and B. You tell me which one's more interesting, all things being equal. A, we sell bike saddles. They are the most optimized bike saddles on the market. They've helped athletes like A and B and C ride 45% faster. Email B, Josh, I know you're training for an Ironman, which means on Saturday you're spending six hours in your bike. 
At hour three, it happens. You get numbness and chafing. You've got to get out of the error bars and stop immediately because your lower back hurts. Which email, A or B? B? Because it's crispy. It's exactly what I would say. Any SDRs in the front row? As an SDR, one of the things you probably hate about your job is that you make 100 cold calls and barely talk to two or three people. Or you're sending email, this guy's nodding. He's actually nodding. But you send email after email and you get little to no responses. And as you're nodding, the brain wants to keep reading because it's like, what do you have for me? This is not generic language. You can't get it from marketing. It's got to be crispy specific language as if your prospects would say it. And I'm going to show you how to get it later. But here's what I call a mind reading tool. Here's what it sounds like in a letter. And you can use this with your prospects. What persona hate? What elves hate about going on quests is how long it takes to rescue princesses. Stuff like finding hidden caves, collecting gems, fighting Lionel, and replenishing hearts. See how crispy and specific that is? Crispy and specific. Next, as we talked about before, people like to dance with the devil they know. Now I'm going to show you a stealth copywriting technique. How do you get someone to think about their brown sword differently? And look at their brown sword and say, this might not be the sword for me. Because remember, we got to move that needle a little bit. we got to get them from yellow to orange. So I'm going to teach you a secret copywriting technique to do it. And I'm going to do that by telling you a story of when I was in the mall a year ago with my wife. I needed nothing. I was just trying to kill some time. So I went into a running store. I needed nothing. If the store associate said to me, what brings you in today? I'm saying nothing. If she said, do you have a problem with your shoes? I'm saying no. But she didn't do any of those things. Instead, she said, hey, Josh, I noticed you're a runner. I said, I am. She goes, how many miles do you run? I go, I do marathons. And then she said, have you ever had a gait test? I said, what is that? Moments later, I'm on a treadmill. And it's being recorded. And as you can see, my ankles are pronated in. And she said, do you know that if you're running in sneakers that are not made for pronated feet, you can get injured on long distance runs? Now, as an old 50-year-old Jewish guy, that scares the bejesus out of me. She said, if you want, we could take a look at your sneakers to see if they're made for pronated feet. And they weren't. And moments later, I'm spending $200. She didn't ask about problems. She found a problem. She illuminated a problem that wasn't there. And that is a secret sales skill. Asking someone a question that gets them to think differently. It's called an illumination question. For chorus, how do you know what your best reps are saying on discovery calls that are closing more business than the rest of the reps? Huh, I don't know that. Illumination questions are powerful because we have to get people to think differently about the brown sword. People don't know what problems are around the corner, but you do. So let's actually see how we would write this. It's called an illumination tool. You're probably aware that there are enemies even more fierce in level four. If he doesn't, he knows it now. And if he's getting hurt in level three, imagine what's going to happen in level four. Next, Will makes a deposit. Most of the time when you reach out to people, they're in the blue zone. So when we're asking for demos, it doesn't make much sense because they're not in the red zone. Here, I'll prove it to you. Raise your hand if you'd be here if this was a chorus demo. Do you think your prospects are different than you? And yet, when we send them eight cadences, we're actually asking them for a demo. The only reason you're in this room is because Beck's making deposits, and I've made deposits, and now you're in this room. So I want to sh shift your perspective a little bit. How can we make a deposit? How can we give someone something of educational value so that when they are ready, they're more likely to meet with us? And what salespeople are doing is they're going for the ask and the demo too soon. It's like meeting someone for the first time, staring into their eyes and saying, can I meet your parents? Let's actually show how we can do this. 97% of prospects are in the red zone. Let's actually look at a couple deposits. What do they look like? Well, here's what it looks like. Since we rely on the success of elves, here's a book that I've enclosed with this letter that can help you find more hidden caves in level four through eight. Now that's interesting to link because hidden caves contain drinks that makes them healthier. Your prospects have something that would make them healthier too. Maybe the book will give you more heart containers, but I hope it will bring, you, bring Zelda home faster. Let me show you what happens after you do the ask. You just include a low friction call to action, which is no call to action. Because if someone wants to respond to your email, they know how to respond to your email. You don't have to tell them, respond to my email. If someone gets enough deposits, like you guys did, you look and say, what's Josh's profile? What's his website? What's he selling? On your own. Godspeed on your quest, Will the Wizard. That's touch one.